Well, awesome. Well, thanks everyone. It's great to be back. Uh, I was a former organizer, like Dan mentioned, most rotated in and out. So it's really fun to be back. And hello, everybody who's uh, online watching. Uh, so I founded McLaughlin Method uh, back in 2020, which is a really great year to start a business. Yay. <laughs> so um, have you ever worked at a company like this? It's too much work and there's no time. You're putting out last minute fires. And decisions take approximately 47 meetings to get to. Eh, seeing a lot of nods. Okay. So what is it like to work there? I want you to throw out one word. What's one word of what it's like to work there? Inefficient, stressful, chaos. All right, those are good words. But uh, words don't always communicate enough of what that experience is really like, right? And so I want us instead, now everybody who's here in person, if you're here virtually, I'm gonna watch the recording and make sure you're doing this, um, but not really. Uh, okay, move your arms around a little bit. I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna have you move. Uh, I'm gonna have you create an image using your physical body. I was gonna take a picture of you. I want us to be able to recognize those different emotions of that experience, all right? I'm gonna do a three, two, one action and we're all gonna do it at the same time. I'm the only one up here performing, all right? So ready? Three, two, one, action. All right, yeah, and hold that, oh, right? Oh, okay, shake it off, right? Um, so we do that in my work because it's a way to express a lot more than just a single word might express about our experience in the workplace. And so what is causing all of these problems in the workplace? Ultimately, it's about culture. So what is culture? Well, we often think that culture is company-wide meetings and we're doing an employee of the month award and we're thinking about benefits and pay and uh, happy hours and company parties. But these are not the reasons why people leave a company. The reasons why people leave companies are about what really matters in culture. I refer to these as the in-between moments of culture. So how people are speaking to you, that random Slack message, uh, if it feels safe to contradict a leader uh, or anyone, and whether or not you're being listened to and how supportive you feel in that environment. If you don't feel like you're getting those things, you're likely to feel demotivated, unappreciated, and not want to stay. Uh, gosh, plummeting got weird on here, huh? Um, so culture is actually how we feel, which drives our actions, which drives our results. So if you feel like this, but you want to feel like this, Right. If we think about the difference in how you might act. So if you're on the left here, you're probably going to be reluctant to share ideas. You're hiding your errors. You might call out sick, uh, really like lays about and not take, especially if you're remote, you might be like, cool, I'm going to go wander about the house and do some laundry. Um, and ultimately, you're irritable and exhausted after work, which is going to impact your family, which also impacts your friends and your overall community. But if you're like this on the right hand side, you're probably excited to go to meetings and you feel like you can share your ideas and bring your creativity and your self to work. Uh, and of course you're energized by work. So at the end of the day, you're like, cool, let's go to a thing and you know, let's uh, maybe do community service or you know, get involved. And really it's about how thriving teams get results. Thriving people, happy people, stay in a company, provide their great ideas, help solve your company's biggest problems. So I started McLaughlin Method as a way to really get at the heart of what these challenges are, because we can't just train people uh, and like talk to them about how to be nice to somebody, right? We need to create some of these experiences. Like I used today, this is a little mini theater exercise that you felt today. Um, I use theater as a method to help us connect, get at some of the things that are really keeping us from connecting. So that way we can learn from them and move on and heal. Uh, heal. So, uh, oh, weird. Um, all of my work is experiential and interactive. We're building communication skills, but with a foundation of empathy and emotional intelligence, because that really drives how we communicate with other people, how we think about collaborating. Uh, yeah, formatting got super weird, huh? Um, <laughs> and ultimately, I'm at, at the point of helping companies solve their root cause problems. So we're not just gonna stay up here at the surface. Sometimes I refer to how many of these culture activities are about putting icing on a shitty cake, right? It still tastes bad. 
And so we're not going to want to keep eating it. But if the cake is really good, which is that kind of like root cause, that root, uh, you know, scenario, then that icing just makes it better, right? Um, and then we're going to rehearse for real scenarios. And many culture consultants or coaches or trainers stop at the point of, hey, here's a report. Hey, here's this like training that I did for you. Uh, and they don't help companies continue to integrate uh, th those new skills, those new policies. And so when I work with companies, I always do that integration support. So that way they're not just being kind of left with uh, what we call in the consulting world shelfware, where you put it on a shelf and then you never look at it again. Um, oh, wait, go back. I think. Oh, yeah, nope. There, there was supposed to be another slide. But um, who am I? I've worked for over uh, 15 years as a coach, trainer, facilitator, uh, consultant. And during that time, I've worked with tons of different tech companies across a variety of industries. Uh, and so I, I know what it's like to go through those companies, especially the ones that like in the startup world are making a really big promise, but aren't fulfilling on that. Right. So um, yeah, so that's McLaughlin Method, uh, where I focus on helping thriving teams and businesses get results. All right, so we're opening it up to Q&A. Does anybody have a question, a comment? Ooh, can comment? I offer an idea if you need things, things that would be really helpful, because I'm talking okay. to my business today in a slightly different way than I have been before. Uh, and so I'm curious what resonates with you or maybe what got you interested what do you have more questions about? Like, are you curious about something, confused about something? And would you, you want to learn more based on this? Cool. Yeah. Uh, can you just describe what you mean by engagement model just so I'm... Got it. Yeah. Great question. So uh, the question was, how would somebody work with me? So I have worked with people through a variety of different means, whether that's one-on-one -on -one coaching. So for those leaders um, or individuals who realize like I have work to do uh, and we use some of the theater methods in that. I do workshops, which can be public workshops where like individuals can pick, you know, buy a ticket. And right now we're doing those online, but really hoping to get some of those in person soon. Uh, and then, uh, and then also companies will hire me to come in and do a workshop or a series of workshops for a team. And then the consulting piece is really kind of like embedded consulting where I'm doing coaching, training, uh, strategic session, uh, and kind of a minimum-ish around six months uh, if that time. Yeah. Cool. So great, great job. Thank you. And great job. Companies spend a lot of money. And you're the same misrepresented about the culture you value. So it's super important. At the same time, I don't think they do enough, something they don't do enough. Right. I felt kind of like the same thing in your presentation. You're trying to make it. You think that many of us are going to be bored and do this. Mm -hmm. right? You get it, but you need a little bit more. Okay, how do you know? Mm, sure. So the model, yep. Maybe another way that is Sure. Yep. Yeah. And these are the things. Now, culture is, I don't have a lot of community, but it's hard because there's not a right, right. just the right for you. Mm -hmm. So, how do you know that whole question? Right? How do you know when culture is right mm -hmm. and wrong? Mm -hmm. One question is that. Yeah, totally. Uh, gosh, so many questions that I'm not going to be able to repeat for everybody who's online. Uh, so sorry, friends. Um, but uh, part of why I, I debated on whether or not I was going to include elements of my method, like 
the process of working with a, a client on the consulting basis or whatever in this um, based on time. I definitely didn't have time. Thank you for the timer. That was very helpful. Um, but I also recognize that part of what I'm challenged in in my business is getting people to be curious enough, curious enough to want to learn more right? Like, and be able to ask that question or look for that question. Like, well, how do you do that? Or like, what would it be like to work with you? Um, so that's, so like the fact that you're asking those questions that tells me you already want to know that. Right. Um, and then the, how did I get into this? And you're going to have to remind me of the other question because I've now forgotten it. How do you know if it's right or wrong? Or something? Yeah. So how do I know if the culture is right or wrong for a certain individual? So it, when we're talking about culture as a broad thing and like, how do we know if that's right, then that usually would get into like my consulting work or when I'm working with a group, like in a team kind of environment. And it comes out of the work that we're doing together in a work, even just in a single workshop where people are able to express things like we did today. Like these experiences are making us feel this way. And so do we want to feel this way? No is feeling this way, getting us the business results that we want to achieve? No. So now we have to kind of design the future together because I'm not coming in and saying, this is the only way that culture is done right because culture and all the little frills around culture uh, are very unique to a company. And so the way that I work with clients is super nimble, super like, we're gonna change it up if it's not working. Um, but when I'm working with like a consulting client from a like kind of full company perspective, we're looking at a ton of data. So we're looking at engagement scores. I'm doing focus groups, you know, doing pulse surveys, things like that. And we're looking for things related to feeling appreciated, feeling included, feeling like you can share ideas, all of those kinds of things. We're looking for those metrics to improve. So um, how did I get into this? I have a long career in the people side of business. And I saw then when I was a, a change management consultant, I saw people listen to me more than they did when I was working internally at a company. Uh, and then I have a theater background. So I was like, I want to bring this all together because I can really see how the theater components really help us to connect on a different level. Uh, and I teach other elements of like what you can learn from the process that say like an actor goes through to understand a character is the same kind of stuff that we can use in the business world or in our lives to understand the people we're in relationship and understand ourselves. So bringing that all together, that's why. Yeah, Dale. Um, thanks, Katie. So uh, a thought that was going through my head as you presented was that when I've been in the position of being the manager controlling some budget who might be looking for programs that I want to bring to my employees, even though this probably pushes it more towards uh, the risk of being shelfware, mm. I usually have a fixed amount of money. Right. And, and I also, like, there's two scenarios. One is I'm told I have a, a, a budget up front. And that's the nice scenario, which rarely happened. The other was at the end of the year, people said, hey, we've got a little extra money left. So teams who want to do right. programs like this, this is your opportunity. So I would love in those scenarios to have a very predictable like here's Katie's intro package yep. or or something like that that you know because because if you get me with that I'd be happy to have the other conversation but if you had come to me and said well I'm happy to like for example the integrative piece yeah I think as a manager I would have been like oh I need something really fixed because I have this budget and right. that would that would frankly intimidate me totally so it was just a thought I wanted to share with you as I was listening to it yeah thank you and I do offer just like a standalone workshop. Uh, and I've been, ex I've been experimenting with trying to get some marketing to work at the end of the year to be like, hey, you have a budget that is going to expire. Why don't you hire me? Um, for some leaders, it is like a team building is like what they will maybe resonate with, right? And I refer to this as team health rebuilding because yes, we're going to have fun and like we're going to build that connection, but we're also going to go a little bit deeper. Um, and one of the slides I didn't get to show you was that even in a single workshop, 80% of people feel more like connected and supported to the group. 86% of people feel some kind of empathy and 93% of people feel valued by their company just by a single workshop. Right. And so, yeah, so that, like, thank you for that. I had, it just didn't go. I don't know what happened. It was gone. 
Yeah, just, just another yeah. first line of republic. I mean, sometimes have formatting issues. And yeah. We need to break that, so. yeah. Yeah. Robin. Uh, so I think you should have a job. I think you did a good job of um, identifying the problem of, you know, the icing on the, the shit cake yeah. um, and how um, exercises in toxic environments don't have trouble fixing it. Mm -hmm. um, what I would love to know more about is why yours works. Like when I think mm -hmm. about bosses that make me feel that cringy yeah. way, I don't want to cringe in front of them. I mm -hmm. don't want them to have that visual of this is how I made Robin feel. Right. I feel less comfortable around her, right? So I would love to know how do you handle a situation with maybe a toxic boss right. that would make this something that that people want to engage in totally yeah thank you for that question uh and we, we don't like jump right into the like cool how do you feel about your boss question <laughs> right you know we we step it up and like one of the exercises that's kind of a besides all like kind of the fun play stuff that i start with uh then one of the first exercises is okay so create an image of what you do every day like a, a typical task that you do um and so like that might be maybe i'm a somebody who, what does this look like? Right, like I might be sweeping, right? And so then, then I have them create an image of how they really feel about doing that work. And then we go around and we all step into that image. And that, first of all, gives us that chance to be like, wow, you kind of do something that maybe you don't love. And I feel that, right? Like I've been there. Uh, and then we can slowly progress. But we don't usually get to the, like, how do I really feel about my boss stuff until like a couple of workshops in. Uh, and I do everything I can to try to make sure that this is not a, somebody is kind of being like, you're stepping way out on like a huge safety limb because that is like one of the big problems that you're already facing in your work, right? Uh, so I really try to make it that we're all doing it at the same time. We could all understand where folks are coming from. Uh, and we usually are creating like an, a new thing to react to, a new like objective scenario uh, rather than like, you know, you hurt me, man. Like that's that doesn't work, right? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no airing agreements. These are not the sessions, like yeah. Cool. Um, 